Hi, my name is Steve Jurch, and I'm the Director of Massage Therapy for the Women's Tennis Association, and I teach continuing education through Jurch Performance Education. And I've been a massage therapist and an athletic trainer for 20 years now, and I've been fortunate enough to work in the sports or clinical environment the entire time. And so I get asked by a lot of students and a lot of therapists how to get into the profession of sports massage. And so what I'd like to talk about today is a few tips that I've seen uh, to, that will help you break into this profession. And so the first thing I want to talk about is um, timing in approaching a organization or a particular office or something like that to break into the profession. And when you think about when is the best time to contact somebody, if you're looking to get into the more traditional sports environment where you're working with a particular team, you want to make sure that they're in their off-season or getting ready to go into their off-season because if they're in the height of uh, practice and play, that's probably not the best time. They're not going to have time to um, you know, hear what you have to say. And typically, the person that you're going to address, if it's a traditional setting, is the head athletic trainer, possibly a physical therapist. And when you make contact with that person, make sure you find out who you're supposed to contact. Don't just address it to whom it may concern or dear head athletic trainer. I've received those types of letters, and I can tell you they don't make it very far. Uh, it's very important that you start to establish your professionalism and that rapport immediately. And one of the uh, biggest tools that you can use is your resume. Now, when you format a resume, it's very, very different from uh, your typical resume for another massage position because you have to act like an educator as well as a therapist. And the reason for that is because in the traditional sports setting, most of the healthcare practitioners don't really understand our knowledge and skill level. They don't know how to utilize us. Uh, they don't understand what we can bring to the table to really help their athletes perform better and stay healthy. And so you have to function to educate them on what you do as well as how you can benefit their team. And one of the, unfortunately, one of the reasons for that is it has to do with uh, profession-wide, our education um, has, lacks, lacks a little bit of consistency. So you can take two massage therapists that graduate from the same, or in the same city from two different schools, and they have different sets of skills. And so when you're dealing with other healthcare practitioners in the sports arena, you're going to run into people who are, have a very clear understanding of what um, healthcare practitioners know. And so we have to do that educational role as well. And so when you're formatting your resume, the first thing you want to do is look at your education. Okay? For your education, you can list if you have adjunct um, areas of education, other degrees, list those as well. But for your massage education, don't just put massage school X many hours because you want to give that person a little bit of insight into what you actually learned because the schools can be so different on what, uh, what they teach their students. And so list specific courses that you took. Maybe include a copy or information on the actual um, course descriptions so that person reading that resume can understand your knowledge base. Once you go through education, we want to look at experience. Um, experience in sports massage, unfortunately, is everything. Okay, so uh, the more experience you have and the right kind of experience is even more important, the better off you are. And when you're listing your experience, obviously list your massage experience, but don't be afraid to list non-massage positions, especially if it demonstrates that you have leadership skills, management experience, um, that you had a position that had a lot of responsibility that went with it. Because those things, even though they're not massage related, they actually go a long way in, in demonstrating the type of responsibility that you can handle. And when you're talking about your massage experience, list maybe what you learned in school if that's if, if you're a brand new graduate what other types of sports experience do you have kind of get a little bit more detail in those in those areas uh, when you look to the next section which would potentially be um, references when you look at references you want to make sure that the references are specific to the position that you're applying for generic references from 12 years ago uh, will not carry a lot of water uh, for a position uh, with a particular organization. And in my current role, I actually see it from both sides. I practice massage um, on the WTA, but I also hire the therapists that work with the players. So I see, 
I have a unique perspective, I think, in that I can evaluate someone's skill set, but then I also uh, know what that environment entails so I can really find that right fit. And we mentioned listing your massage experience, but what type of experience you should, should you get and how should you get it? You want to, unfortunately, a lot of your experience is going to have to be volunteer, but I would not look, look at it as free work or volunteer work. I would look at it as the opportunity to gain experience. And so you want to not just do every free thing that comes along when someone asks you to. You want to be able to uh, target your experience, uh, target your experiences so they benefit you down the road. And which means you may have to turn down an opportunity. And that's okay. But how you turn down something speaks volumes. Uh, we all, I always have a saying that says you want to build your bridges, don't burn them. Okay, so when you're looking for what types of experience to get, look for things that are going to put you uh, with a particular athlete or particular team for a long period of time. Okay, working one day events are fantastic. It's a good way to get some experience, but it's not the only type of experience that you should seek. So look for things like volunteering with colleges and universities, uh, semi-pro sports, uh, triathletes. Uh, there's typically triathlete clubs that you could sponsor and work with, a, with an athlete throughout the entire season because that tells uh, someone like me who looks for, for sports therapists that you've treated an athlete through every phase of their training, whether it's competition, recovery, whether they've had injuries, whether they're just in a normal maintenance uh, phase of training. And so those types of experience carry a lot of weight. And you know, if you can't get financially compensated, that's okay. Look for other things like can you do a trade for tickets or marketing exposure or can you, um, you know, just get other types of advertisement or involvement in the organization that will give you more exposure that you can utilize in your private practice. So once you've got that, types, that type of experience, um, you can really capitalize on it to in improve your chances of getting into the profession. And so no matter what you're doing, whether you're talking to someone, whether you are doing volunteer work, gaining that experience, we always want to be diligent about um, portraying a professional, um, positive, you know, a very responsible and educated view uh, for those people so they can understand or we can take that opportunity to educate them on what massage therapists can really do. Thanks and I hope that has helped and good luck. I'd really like to thank Oakworks for putting these videos together. I'm very passionate about massage education and I think these are great tools for therapists. I have some really interesting things on my website and I'd love for you to check it out at www.jerchperformanceeducation.com. Thanks, and I hope to see you soon.